Hey, it's Joe Lines from Automator, and uh, here's another episode of what we automated this week. Let me switch to my desktop here, and I'll use Prompt Assistant. No, not there. Tools, duh. Okay, recently modified files. This runs through my S drive. Now, we've done other stuff, but the S drive is the main stuff we do for um, with everybody. And also, that S drive, that's where all of our auto hockey files got deleted. I mentioned that in another video. Make sure you watch that video and understand. We do have a script that helps back them up, but... All right, so Cameron, we had a really great call with uh, another radiologist client. Uh, lots of fun. Did a couple things for him getting started, and we found some better ways to automate uh, PowerScribe, which is the one tool most radiologists use. Uh, and after the call, Isaias unfortunately wasn't able to make that call, but he realized there's an even better approach than what we had suggested. So we're going to get back on the horn with Cameron at some point um, and show him an even faster, more reliable solution. And we're going to start building a tool that uh, could be used for other radiologists to make it flexible where they can do some of the stuff that um, many of our clients are wanting to do. So that was fun. This WebSocket, I think Isaias must have opened that because I was talking to him about when we're on calls with clients, often we want to either give them code or get code from them. And usually code, of course, is text. And I said, you know, we should be able to write an auto hockey script that either sends it to a database, an online database that we pull from, or sends it maybe through a webhook or an API call, so to speak, that we could have a web server running, an auto hockey server running on our computer with a static IP address that doesn't change, and then allow us to basically sync our clipboards to make it faster and easier. And this is sort of thing is, you know, we work hard, we even spend money to have Copilot from GitHub. So when Isaiah is programming, it's offering up ideas and the code that he might want to type and it, it's these things there all these things are just tools that make us work smarter not harder right we're, we can be more productive which allows us to for our client work you know we we're charging i think 72 an hour roughly or 53 ish if you're a hero member because you get 25 percent off but anyway we we always find ways to work um faster and more productive and actually with camera it's a good example just FYI, like I don't tell this a lot of people, but like we had a call last week, two weeks ago, I think it was at Thomas. Um, we couldn't even help him and I didn't charge him for like the two hour call. Like if we can't help you, um, I don't feel justified in getting paid, right? And a, a, a person wrote me this last week, uh, a lawyer and said, hey, here's what I want, wrote a long email with this is what I want done. Um, and he wanted a quote. And I'm like, I, I don't do quotes because no matter how good you are, um, I always first we do a consultation with you to talk about it, what is your real goal. Let's take a step back, you know, because often people outline this is what I want you to do for me, doing these exact steps, and usually they're not they're not aware of other approaches or or maybe if it's going to be run on multiple computers, lots of other things, right? So we take a step back, uh, but also we make sure we add value. And with Cameron, we actually did some stuff that, like I said, we we if if Isaiah had been available, we would have known this up front. So I remove time from our call. It's like, I'm, I'm very fair and honest. And I know it's our best, you know, way to keep clients forever because they get addicted to us because we offer such value. So in anything that you're doing, make sure you offer value and, you know, take it, be, be open to um, offering, you know, some money back or something to take account when something doesn't go quite right. Like um, that's what we do. So anyway. Um, that WebSocket is one of those things we had done for a previous client using a, a, a web server, a local server, and not allowing people to connect and do a quiz like in Zoom and send the answers to us. And that's so I'm like, maybe we can borrow some of that for this pasting of the clipboard type approach. So that was that. Um, we did a video, I don't know if it's been shared yet, on Automate My Task V2. Um, so we're updating it. And I realized if you saw the Joe is an idiot video, which uh, it wasn't mentioned in the newsletter, it'll be out later. I realized we were working on the the version two and I realized, so I'm like, okay, we should be able to use mouse coordinates for clicking a thing or image search uh, using fine text from, I think, Feiyu. But what I hadn't thought through at the time was, hey, we should have a plan for using AI for doing the image search. So even though we may not solve that at the beginning, we're planning on our GUI to incorporate that because I know at some point, We'll either have a local LLM on our computers, and that way we don't have to worry about privacy issues. Um, or most things, if you're trying to click an icon or something, it's probably not privileged. So a lot of people probably wouldn't care. So we'll use like the ChatGPT token to use their API call. So we're going to build that into um, the Automate My Task version too. And we also created a wizard, which is really cool. And, and as Ace and I documented in a video, uh, so go check out that video. It may not be released yet. It'll be released this week probably. And 
we were showing how automate my task itself at the beginning was this large GUI and it was really hard to follow. And we dat we created like a fake wizard to step you through the process and make it much clearer so the users don't have to be experts. They, they know exactly what to focus on on each part of the, the process. So it'll really help them out. Um, so yeah, we are working on updating that to a V2 version. Uh, WebSocket, oh, that was, I'm not sure why that was also there, uh, but anyway. ClipShare, uh, we were updating. This is the tool we use amongst our automators, so Isaiah, Urfi, and Rizwan, and I. Uh, and we switched over to a new version, which is closer that we can share with everyone else. All you need is a shared drive, um, like a cloud drive or something, right? A shared source. And then we can share our clipboard. And actually, Irfan had, we were working on a different tool. What was it? Oh, no, it was this tool. When I had the idea, hey, we could use the SAPI model. So when we, sometimes we use this clip share for sharing clipboards or files, or we'll send a message. Like I can, I can tag Isaiah's and send a message to him and it will display on his screen. And initially it, it played a sound like a person screaming and go, ah, so get your attention. And then you'd see it. And I said, Hey, wait a minute. Why don't we have an option to use the SAPI model to speak the message so the person hears it, right? Um, so I'm like, oh, that'd be really cool. And then Irvin had a really great idea. I thought was, what if we add that functionality to our Notify class? So if you haven't used our Notify class, it's it's really awesome. It allows you to easily display notifications on the screen. You can play sounds. You can also have callbacks to wait for someone to click it or not, and then it moves forward. It's really, really flexible. But one more option will be, hey, Maybe you have it um, speak what is being notified and display it instead of just um, displaying it, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. Really good idea. So yeah, we're, we'll be working on updating that at some point. And then that'll be in a version we can share with everyone. We had it bound to just us. We were hard coding us in it and we're making it more flexible where anyone can add a new user, add their computer name, and then it knows exactly who's who. And you need the person to know to say, hey, Joe shared his clipboard, or Isaiah shared his clipboard, or if I want to target one of these guys, we can send a message to the whole team or to them. So we're working on that. This effortless video reducer, really, really cool script. So Irfan added the functionality to, as it's running, it tells you both the estimated time the video is going to be completed and how many minutes that is for now. Because I'm like, why are we doing math in our heads? You know, why don't we just... Um, look at that ratio um, and then calculate what time that'll be. And so say like right now, if I ran it and said 11.35, oh, it'll be done in 11.40. Um, and then in parentheses it says five minutes, right? And then it updates it as it goes. But it's a really cool functionality. So that one's even closer to getting to where we can share it. I did notice I used it yesterday and I had an error pop up. And uh, it's I'm not going to go to the error here, but um, it, it shouldn't be that hard to fix. I was just really surprised that it was erroring out. Um, podcast a video we actually this one had an error and also it takes um, an audio file allows you to put a picture on it I was listening to this old it's from Paul Hartunian he, he's a um, a PR guy so for press release stuff telling you how to do it and how to good, be a good speaker and everything and had some really it was an hour and seven minutes long and it was just all an audio file and I wanted to be able to summarize it. Unfortunately, I don't have an easy tool right now for summarizing audio text. So I used this tool to put a picture on it and upload it to YouTube. And then in YouTube, I have a, um, a tool I pay for that uses AI to summarize the video and give you bookmarks and stuff and timestamps and what it said. So that's a really cool one. But I noticed there was an error. It's like I drag it on there and it instantly said done, even though FFmpeg was still running in the background and then it finished. So... Irfan, I think, fixed that. Again, we haven't shared that one yet, but we're really close. Uh, Fine text version 2. As Ace and I did a video on this last week. Um, that's one's, it's actually public now. I think I saw it was released and getting some views. Uh, Fine text. Don't get caught up in the word, the name Fine text, because you're really doing like a pattern match. And in that video, that's where, again, it's a great tool, but it's so complicated in, in I don't want to say convoluted, but... It's just really complicated, and most people don't want something that complicated to figure out how to use. So that's why we had created Automate My Task version 1, which is available. It's in V1, and it dumps V1 code out. It still works fine, but it's V1. And that's what actually fired me up to say, let's create a V2 version of Automate My Task, and let's fix some of the things that I realized after we created the um, first version of it to make it work better.
uh, FlexiFinder. I think we had it, found an error in that one. It's a great tool because you can hit a hotkey, which I don't remember at the moment. Let me just hit the button on my system tray. And you can tell it to search, and it remembers what you had selected. And you can edit this so I can go into options. I can change what's there. So you don't have to be into auto hotkey. I can also change the font size and if it's in dark or light mode, which is cool. Um, I prefer dark mode on average. Now, see, that apply, that one, I'm going to have to tell... Rizwan that also when you hit apply you should always go back to the GUI not not just disappear right it should be up there and if I had paid attention I would have noticed the hotkey which is oh shift or Windows shift M yeah weird hotkey to me but um yeah so that's you can hit that and pull and if you select text which I don't have an easy way to do this but um let's I selected some text on the other screen and Windows shift M so I'm gonna select text on the other screen and hit Windows Shift M. Oh, I hit caps lock. Windows Shift M. Oh, and that look at that. It was already up, and it just popped it in there. So that was what was selected over there, which allows you to um, select text and hit a hotkey, and then it'll, it'll pull this up, and then you can just hit search, uh, and it remembers which ones you searched before. So when I'm doing a lot of stuff with SQL, there's certain ones, and maybe I would have a different hotkey. You know, maybe we'll make this more complex at some point, or have a different version. But it's very, very cool because it search it uses Google to search those sites that loaded on another page. Let me show that over here. Oh, apparently I have to floss, by the way. Um, so that shows it on, um, it uses Google, and you can see, um, it searched for Unremarkable on AutoHotkey Docs, which of course comes back with nothing because that's not really relevant. And it searched um, AutoHotkey itself. So that was what was in my preferences, right? And I could have surrounded that with double quotes. Anyway, it's a really cool tool. Um, get active path. Now this one we did notice. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, some of the international people were mentioned an error because Irfan, when he created it and somewhere in there, we were looking at JSON and he didn't turn on the Unicode in the JSON library that we used, which was from geek dude, which is crazy fast and awesome. But by default, it doesn't have Unicode enabled. And so, we, I, I, you know, that's one of the things like, well, we need to always remember to turn that on, which is a little silly to me, but I get why Geek2 didn't do it, is he wants it to be faster, because it's faster if you don't. However, for the stuff we do, we always just enable that. I don't care about a fraction of the time. Um, I'm not doing millions of things with it, so uh, I, I don't really care about that. But anyway, we updated that. I think there was one other bug in it, but it's a great tool in any program. You can get, like, I can actually, even in uh, an auto hotkey script, I can highlight and hit the hotkey, control shift c and it should have worked. I don't know if it's actually running right now. Um, usually I have that running by default, but I did reboot, so maybe it maybe didn't get um, turned on. But even in the auto hotkey GUI, it will give you the path to your clipboard and show you that, which is really, really handy. Oh, I have the no I turned off notifications. That's why. It was working, um, so I could paste it somewhere. But anyway, um, so here's the fine text. Now, this one, we, we did a video on it, and in the video, I think we used Desclada's version, and then someone asked about... Oh, OCR, and I don't I don't know if, if Descalada incorporated that or not, but the Feiyu version, the V1 version, had crazy OCR video stuff as part of it, um, which was, that's, the Feiyu version is the one we um, we went back and used, but anyway, yeah, it's pretty powerful. Uh, get that back over there, VS Code, this has to do with the Get Active Path. Um, again, WebSocket, uh, yeah, I don't know who or what we're doing with that, other than what I mentioned earlier. Um, we had a call with uh, another hero member, and we gave him a good solid intro to our Excel function library, and he was automating Excel. And in that, um, we started demoing the Excel function library in V2, and we found a, a small bug. It was a, well, yeah, it was a bug. Our example used too many parameters, uh, values, and then so uh, it threw us off for a good 15 minutes because it was just one thing we just didn't see it for a while. But um, we updated our Excel function library, the V2 function library. I don't know if we changed the V1. Maybe that V1 had a bad example as well, so maybe that one did change. Um, and apparently, uh, maybe Irfan's doing some stuff with um, Rafidium, and maybe that's why we're doing that. QAP knockoff. I, I don't know why. Oh, I guess Irfan went through and updated several things with that CJSON library. Um, this QAP knockoff, this is the preamp. Um, as I mentioned with Prompt Assistant, I had Makesmith first build it, I had Tidbit build another version, and then Isaias finally um, 
kept at it and saw really created a whole new version again i've i've spent a lot of time and money creating prompt assistant it's a great tool we wanted something super simple something so intuitive that like you don't really need to know what you're doing to use it right so anyway um so, somehow that got updated um quick file backup this is the one we mentioned during the uh, warning about the auto hockey scripts getting deleted. We wrote this one real quickly to, to back up and change your extension because the um, antivirus deleted all of our auto hockey files, like 7,800 auto hockey files, which was a major bummer, um, if you can imagine. So, yeah, we wrote this to help with that. This display screen banner. Now, I can't wait to do a video on this. Uh, what it does is allows Isaiah to be running the script in his computer. The banner shows up on his computer. And then what happens is um, I can type something and it will display on his computer. Now, the difficulty was we didn't want to have a caption on top because we wanted the banner usually to be either dark or yellow or solid color, but no banner, right? Because it just kind of breaks the coolness of it. And we also wanted to allow the user to move it and have it resizable. And so, unfortunately, when you make something resizable, it can't have a caption. And we got it down smaller, but... Isaiah's came up with this really cool way to allow us to click in the corner, then make it resizable, move it. It actually puts the caption up there, I think, temporarily, and then undo it. So it's a really cool one. We'll document it at some point, a video on that. Um, but these scripts, yeah, they're really cool because when you're, when you're speaking, it's really hard to keep track of everything else. That's why I don't put up the URLs while I'm doing these videos. I do them in post-production. But... During our hero calls, which is three hours a week, and even when Isaiah and I are recording a video, um, he's often talking, and I know about the script so I can reference. And so in the video, I can actually put it up on his screen, and I don't have to do that in post-production, which just saves us time, right? And gets it all done right then. Because I have to go watch, after we record the videos, I have to go watch and edit them. And if I didn't have to do that and add the stuff, it just takes time and DaVinci Resolve. Um, it's already incorporated, embedded into it. Man, that'll save me a lot of time, so... That's the one we're working on there with, with all of those. Um, shell hooks. Now, we haven't shared this one yet. Now, we did a video, which I don't know if it's released or not, but um, Hero members, I just gave it to them a few minutes ago because they get they get an early peek at all of our videos. And years ago, Jackie and I did a video where Jackie taught me how to use this class from Fanatic Guru on shell hooks. And it's awesome, but it's all V1. And so I asked Irfan to convert it to V2. Um, Meanwhile, we were doing, actually back to this display screen banner, um, one idea I had was when you move your mouse over it, it would actually change to being resizable. And I was thinking we could use a shell hook for that. And Isaiah said, no, oh, I'd use a, a message for that. And I didn't interrupt him then, but I'm like, when do you, how do you decide by using a, a Windows message versus a shell hook versus a Windows hook? There's a lot of different approaches. And so I had no idea. Um, Turns out, neither did Isaiah. He, he knew how to use each one, but he hadn't really ever thought through which one you use and when and how they're different from each other. So we did a vi good video on that. Um, we first did it with the Hero Group, and then Isaiah and I did a private video um, shared to YouTube. So that one will be out later this week. It's a pretty advanced topic, but it's very, very cool. So look for that video. Um, again, we were working with these. Now... At some point, we'll share that updated class in V2, so we'll have an easy way to do shell hooks because it's an advanced topic. But when you study the code, it's uh, once you understand classes, and I'll, we have a, a course on objects and classes. Now, it doesn't cover shell hooks specifically, but it covers how to use classes and objects. And all of our courses come with a 200% money back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose, right? You might want to check that out. Um, and let's see the checklist we shared. Uh, we did a video on this. No, wait a minute. I don't remember if we did a video on that yet. That was we shared it during the hero call, but um, showing this cool script. Let me let me see here. Let me pull up my version. So I'm going to open this folder. I just think it's a really cool. Let me launch it. Script of if I have a bunch of ideas, um, and I don't think mine got updated because that trim should have been part of that. But let's say I, I uh, let's say today I have to get lunch. Oh, my caps lock is on. So there we go because I have a hotkey, of course, to. Um, title case or the lower case get lunch um, order veggies work on pond and record this video record video now I hit apply and now I have my list now let's say if I 
or if I go through this and order my video of veggies, I can just click it and it gives me this cross through, right? So I can close this thing, hit control shift W, it pops back up. Oh, now I need to get lunch. Okay. What's really cool about that is it doesn't delete it, doesn't remove it. And you can have different lists, right? So we can jump through the different lists. Um, I think it's really, really cool. This, I was checking to see if the line breaks work, but this will be one, I think another week we'll have this out. It's, it's basically done, so we just got to get it ready to share, but it's very close. Uh, and sometimes you have something really quick, and sometimes, like for our courses, Isaiah has this crazy long, he's almost done with our course on regex, by the way. And that's what he's doing right now. He's work, working through his checklist of what to do when we launch a course. There's 20, 30 things easily that we have to do. Um, it's actually quite time consuming. People, you know, some people think that we overcharge for our courses. Like It's a lot of work to put a course together, by the way. Um, so anyway, so this tool helps make sure you have that checklist. Like pilots and airplanes have a list for a reason, right? Because you don't want to miss certain things and lists are great for stuff. But also sometimes you want just a quick thing where I got I got an hour, I want to get this done. And also there's a really good psychological feeling of when you cross things off the list and that's what I wanted this thing to do, right? Um, and not just delete it because then you're like, well, did I do anything? Yeah, I have nothing. Yeah, that, that's not very helpful. So anyway, there's that. Um, Toggle between monitors. This one, really, really cool. Is it running right now? I think so. So if I hold down Alt... No, it's not running. Um, this is one I need to go turn it on because it, if you use my window snipping tool, you know it's addictive. And, and a buddy of mine, Steve, just wrote me the other day just saying he thought of a new way to use that tool, right? Toggle across monitors, uh, between monitors. You can, If you have more than one... one actually, let me open it because I can show you. Um, and it, it won't make a lot of sense because I'm only sharing... I'm using... Um, OBS, right? But I'm going to open. When you open the preferences, it shows you this says monitor one here. And then on my other monitors, this says two and three. This is where I get to choose between mon which monitor I want to toggle between. Oh, I want to toggle between number one and number three. And it's choosing which ones it'll toggle between. Why we haven't released this yet is because we realized first the other day when we've implemented this, if you only have one monitor, it just tells you the script is not going to help you and doesn't even run because you need more than one monitor. If you have two monitors, hey, this part here, this shouldn't even be displayed because you only have two monitors. You don't have a choice. So it'll toggle between those two. Um, that we need to implement. If it, you have more than two, that's when you need to have this, right? And so it's one of those things. Is that required? Could we release it right now? Yes. But the first time Isaiah's popped this open, or maybe it was her fan, but they're like, well, wait a minute. Where's my first monitor? Where's my second monitor? Well, that's not what you're doing. Um, what you're doing is choosing which ones do you want to toggle between, and that's why we put up this monitor number, because the auto hotkey number isn't the same as the Windows display number. And so sometimes they're the same, often they're not, and it gets very confusing. So I said, we, let's just use our, this is using our notify class, by the way, puts it in the top left section of each monitor, and then... Um, you get to choose. It says which one do you want to choose. Maybe we should say monitor number one, monitor number two, right? That'll help you bind that, but I, I think people get it. Um, and then you pick your hotkey, which is alt, right mouse button for me. So I'm going to hold down alt and right mouse button, and it throws it to the other monitor, right? Um, really cool, cool. So very cool script. I used to use it a ton, and now we have it in V2. So that'll be there. Um, Apparently, Irfan did something. This is a really great... i got to figure out how to share it sometime. I guess I do it on a non-hero video. But we it, it allows us to summarize our hero calls, put it into an HTML thing, shorten it down to 5,000 characters because that's what YouTube can take, dumps it in there, and then dumps it onto our private page for the hero group with the full list because there's usually like more like 8,000 characters, but YouTube can't take that, right? So it has the time codes, what was summarized um, in our private chat, uh, which is really, really cool. So, But this, it used to take me a good 20 to 30 minutes um, each week. I'd say at least 30 minutes each week to do this because it was I had three hours of videos I had to do it for and it just take time. This script now, it does it in, I get it done in maybe two minutes, somewhere in there. It's, it's, a, it's a great time saver. So very cool stuff. We use Refadium to go cause, and connect to it now. Refadium, um, that's what Irfan created. That's why, one of the reasons why he works for me is um, he... Uh, he created this really cool class that does really reliable stuff. Um, and it's available in V1 and V2 now. And it allows you to re very reliably do a, 
complex web scraping behaviors. Uh, if you're doing simple stuff, you might try Auto Control, which is a Chrome extension, which you can automate also with AutoHotKey somewhat. But, or um, you can use UIA for very simple stuff or just inject JavaScript into the command line. But anything more than just basics, that's where we switch over to Refadium, and it's a real way, amazing way to do it. So, yeah. Uh, and then this one, so we're I can't wait. We're almost there. What it does is when I make the newsletter video, um, when I write the newsletter, I put in videos and links to videos. I have a script where if I highlight uh, a YouTube ID, let me just show that part. Let me, um, yeah, so here we go. Nope, that one doesn't have it. Okay, so what I do is I'll highlight a YouTube URL. Actually, let's say here if I was, um, watch this video. And, and in here, I will say Control K, put in the video link, which is there. Um, and now this is what I have from Word, and I'll come in here, and I can highlight all this if I want, and hit my hotkey. What it does is it takes this ID, it, it, it does a regex, grabs that ID, um, sends it to there, and then I can put it here, and it, it gets the title, um, and then it gets the, because it knows the ID, this is a hard-coded, we don't pull it because we already know it. This this path never changes. I'm oh, sorry, that's not that path. Sorry, right here. This one doesn't change because you just put a zero at the end of it with this image. It's always standard. But what I told our fan was I'd rather have, like, the, the play button overlaid over this. So now what he did was he automates grabbing this JPEG file, downloading it, adding the play button over it, pushes it to the automator, and then returns that URL, which is what I'll share in the newsletter. So it'll have like a play button over it, which will just, it gives a little bit more of a nudge for people to realize that they can just hit play and watch the video, right? So um, we're really close on that one. And at some point I'll figure out how to share that. Um, and then of course change where it's uploading the video to, right? That'll be the hard part of it. I'm not sure how to share that, but. That is a, it's a pretty cool script that, uh, that is going to save me a ton of time and increase our clicks on our, on our newsletter. So that's what we've been working on this week. Uh, remember we do done for you work. We're doing more and more of it. Um, I've had less, less projects to do myself. So we, we take on client work when we have the bandwidth and, uh, yeah, if you want us to, if you like me think your time is worth more than, um, anything else in the world, right? That's where you can hire people who are better at auto hotkey. I realized like years ago, hiring Maestrieth and Isaias, they could do in minutes what would take me hours and weeks. And not only would they be doing it faster, but they could do it better, far better. And it's more robust and everything. So that I started hiring these guys and that's what we do, right? So we outline projects. Also, we take a step back because a lot of people don't understand really take into account what could be done. And that's where we really excel is saying, hey, let's help you guys figure out what, what we can do and what can save you a lot of time. Also, don't try to automate everything, you know, baby step through it, right? So hope you enjoyed that. Please like the video if it helped you out. It really helps us get more views. Have a great day. Cheers.